Hey, Santa, you could win in APCO's Cash for Chrissy competition. That's right, APCO Joe. There's 1K to brighten your day. And 1K to give away to a mate for Christmas. APCO's Cash for Chrissy, on now at APCO. Ho, 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 ho. The biggest talking points in the world of racing, with some of the biggest names in the game having their say. This is Track Talk on Bensley. Join the chat by texting through on 0499 736 736. We thought this Thursday morning we'd reflect on 2021. What a year it's been. Simon Donopoulos from Racing and Sports. Good morning to you, Simon. Yeah, morning, Andrew. How are you? I'm very well indeed. And uh, when you sort of start sitting down and working out the horses that we've seen through the year, it's quite staggering, some of the efforts. Yeah, we're very fortunate, Andrew. I think every year we sort of, I looked ahead this year and thought we were light on numbers in terms of our horses at the top of the tree. And then you fast forward through the year and all of a sudden you go back and look at it. And we're very fortunate to have uh, the star power that we do down in Australia and obviously very elegant winning the Melbourne Cup, I think just capped it off uh, beautifully. Lovely way to round out the year. She's an out and out champion and she showed us that at Flemington. And from winningedgeinvestments.com, Dean Evans, happy Thursday to you, Dean. Happy Thursday, Andrew. Hope you're well. Yeah, really well. And uh, you were comprehensive. I put out to both guys, uh, just give us a few ideas about what your thoughts Hey, Dean, you've, you've really comprehensive. You've loved 2021 on the track, haven't you? Uh, look, it was, it was a fantastic year. So many so many big highlights, you know. Uh, uh, we've seen some absolutely top quality horses, like uh, you know, Very Elegant and, and Nature Strip really dominating, I think, in terms of Australian stayers and, and sprinters. Um, and, and, you know, one thing I've really enjoyed about the year is I don't think I've ever been as excited for a, a 2022 year, uh, the, the the up and coming horses that we have coming through the ranks are, are just exceptional. So you know it's been it's been a really great year with a lot of highlights, but I think there's a lot to look forward to next year as well. So Dean, I'll come to you on incentivise as uh, as a watcher of horses coming through from where it all began back in March of April and ends up in a Melbourne Cup and wins all those feature races along the way. How do you reflect on incentivise? Well, I think he's, uh, he, he's what every horse owner dreams of, you know, to have a horse, uh, you know, his first three starts, he was beaten four lengths, five lengths and 18 lengths, you know, so there weren't high hopes early on. Um, and, and, and then Steve Tregear just did, you know, an incredible job with him and, and won six straight and he just kept better and getting better and better. And you know, certainly from a rating perspective um, and on the sectional, you know, he was doing some amazing things over there in Queensland, but, you know, he's, he's then going to Peter Moody, um, you know, one first up the Maccabi uh, in really impressive fashion and, and then just kept doing it in the Turnbull despite sort of running so, so quick early. He was tough late and then that Caulfield Cup win was, was something else. You know, he just uh, he just pummeled them by four lengths and there was sort of nothing that, that went near him. And, you know, I just think it's, uh, you know, it, it's good to have a, another Australian stayer, you know, very elegant, tried to sort of hold the flag. But, you know, while the overseas Raiders have been coming in and taking a lot of those staying races, um, you know, we didn't have much to uh, to fend them off with, but you know, there weren't there weren't many raiders this year. But you know, we've got a really good one in incentivise, and he was very brave in, in the Melbourne Cup. Uh, and you know, we've we've got sort of a good Australian stayer to 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 replace very elegant when she uh, you know when she retires and, and probably heads off uh, you know to, for an overseas uh, sojourn next year. Simon Donopoulos, I want to go to the other spectrum and a horse that we're really starting to warm to in Perth is Western Empire. And I know through time form ratings, he's now gone into that Tom top 10 group. Uh, I know you love your WA racing. How do you rate Western Empire? Yeah, he's one of the, certainly one of the better ones we've seen in recent years. You just look at the margin in the railway. So going back to 1980, no horse has won the railway by further. So it was a significant winning margin. And while there wasn't any Eastern Raiders in the race, I don't think it would have mattered. I think they would have just filled the gap between uh, first and second. I don't think they would have got near him in that race. He's ran a figure of 121, which is a significant number in the railway, as you touched on, Andrew. Puts him in the top 10 horses in the country. And I'd like to think he's probably going to be a little bit better than that as well. We get another look at him this weekend in the Kingston town. And then all going well, we hopefully... Uh, get to see him here in the autumn. But 
obviously we'll just have to see if they do elect to travel uh, with the border restrictions. But Team Williams opening up a satellite stable in Melbourne, that's certainly like to think got to help our chances of seeing him over here. Because if they do, I think, you know, he'd be a serious contender in the All-Star Mile. And then it's three weeks of the QE, which ideally that would be my prep for him. If they do bring him over, I think he is one of the more exciting horses we've got. Still a big jump to get to a horse like Incentivise, who is the rate of the best horse in the country, 129 off that Caulfield Cup. If he can get to that level, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, really exciting horse and testament to the Peters and Team Williams. I think they are arguably one of the best stables in the country, if not the best. The way they bring these horses along, we saw him last year during the summer carnival being beaten in the guineas and then obviously they stretch him through to win the derby same path as regal power they bring him back one start leading into the railway and he's just dominant there they beat the handicapper but i think he could have carried top weight and beat them as well so yeah very exciting horse we've seen new trainers come along like annabelle nisham dean but kira Maher and david eustace the combination that they've had uh, with their training bases able to send horses uh, and, and wherever they go, they always have the tendency of running well. Uh, we're now excited about the two-year-old Cool and Gatta, but Atotsu and the others, gee, they've, they've, they've set it up really strong for 2022, haven't they? Yeah, they've, they've, they've got an incredible operation. You know, they sort of, uh, uh, you know, took a lot from uh, from the Darren Weir stable and really ran with it, but they've just been incredible. And I thought the effort to get Atotsu to win a Victoria Derby third up in their first prep with the horse uh, coming off a mile run, you know, that's just something you don't see. You, you generally don't even see a, a VRCW win, you know, fourth up. They've usually got to have at least five runs in, in that conditioning. So their training effort, I thought, to, to get Hitotsu to win third up off, off a mile run and, and, and absolutely destroyed them was, was just incredible. Uh, you know, like you say, they've, they've also got Cool and Gatta, um, who, who looks, uh, you know, pretty hard to beat in a magic million. So they can train... They can train a two miler. They can train a steeple chaser. They can train a you know a thousand meter group one winner. Um, they've got every string of their bow. Uh, you know I think they're they're clearly the best trainers in, in Victoria, and they're even producing great trainers now. You know they've uh, Annabelle Nation's come out of their understudy and, um, and and come from nowhere and, and and had sort of two two superstars in Moanga and Zaki already. So uh, you know they're an amazing operation and, and they're probably going to produce a whole lot of other great trainers. Um, who, who learn their system as well. Uh, where do we start with Mars Crusader? Uh, Simon, he's got so much ability and he, he, he didn't win the Everest, but he, he uh, you know, not everything worked out. Um, I don't know. If, if you try and change the way that he jumps out of the barriers and improves it a bit, but you don't want to take away the finish of his race either. Uh, how do you see him as a horse going into next year? I think he's a terrific horse in terms of doing your form because he's going to be the classic for and against. He reminds me sort of um, a little bit of nature ship early doors. You either loved him or you hated him. And I think Mars Crusader is going to fit that bill just with his racing pattern. You know he's loaded with talent, but there's going to be some that are very happy to oppose him given his racing pattern. I think the concern for me was we saw him jump so well at his last start uh, behind Eduardo. And yeah. when he settled so close to the speed, you know, watching the race, I thought it was game over. And then he, you know, it could have been at the end of his prep, which, you know, could explain the disappointing performance. But part of me feels that they're not going to try and do that again. They're just going to be happy to um, ride him cold in his races. And I think, you know, watching a race, I think backmarkers are ones that certainly excite people and, they're the ones that the fans really get around because you're not sure if they're going to get there if they do. And similar to, you know, easy line to draw is with Chautauqua. So he's very exciting. He's, you know, he's a rated 125. You know, I think he's the fifth best horse in the country. So he's going to win a lot of races and he's going to do a very, it's going to, when he does it, it's going to be very good to watch. He is, uh, Dean. He's one of those uh, horses that just launches himself. He's always compared with the stablemate Chautauqua because they come with that late, late burst. But if he can get a clean path late in that last 200 metres, Dean, there's no stronger horse than him late. No, he's got you know incredible late sectionals. He's, he's not quite Chautauqua, but he's, he's very, very good. And I think the key, really, you know, if you look at it simplistically, he, he chased home uh, Nature Strip and the TJ and the Everest uh, you know, this year, uh, hit the line really well both times, a bit unlucky in the, in the TJ. 
Um, and, you know, either, either five-year-old and nature strips are seven-year-old. So nature strips starting to go on, on, on the decline. Um, you know, you'll presume he's obviously still at the peak of his powers, but, you know, if nature strips going to start turning the tables, it's going to be last year. So I think, uh, you know, I, I think Mark Crusade has uh, already got the ability to, to turn the tables on nature strip next year. And then we've even got another exciting sprinter and graceful girl in, in WA as well. And, uh, and I think, uh, you know, the one who's going to improve the most when we get to sort of Everest next year is, is lost in running. So I think it's going to be a really, really good, good Everest next year as, uh, as nature strip starts to, you know, perhaps come back to the field uh, uh, from from an age perspective. Well, it's going to be interesting, Simon. Uh, you know, the suggestion is that nature strips a good chance of going to the UK, and home affairs is probably the other one. I mean, Coolmore are very keen to always promote themselves and make this horse into an international stadium. If it was down the straight at Royal Ascot, which one would you be backing, say, in a 1,200-metre race, Home Affairs or Nature Strip? I think my heart says Nature Strip because he's been a good horse to me, but I think looking at what Home Affairs did in three starts in the spring, around 125 in the Coolmore and assault of the clock. So he, I'd like to think he's probably still got more to come. So heading over to the UK and talking to Adam Blenker, who is our international form expert at racing and sports, he doesn't think there's a lot over there at the moment. So I think, you know, it's time to head over all guns blazing. And Nature Strip rated 128, Home Affairs rated 125. In terms of a two-pronged attack, I'll be surprised if we can't land the prize with one of them. Yeah. What What are your thoughts, Dean, on, on Royal Ascot for either of those horses, given that last sort of little bit up the hill? Yeah, I, I think they'll be way too good for the English sprinters. I think our, our sprinters have proven dominant for a long time. It's been a shame, you know, it's been quite some time since uh, since we've had any horses really travel overseas, and I think it's going to be really exciting if uh, those two plus very elegant get over there and can, uh, you know, show everyone what the Australian horses can do. But I think they're both absolute top line sprinters, and uh, you know, I think if, if Chris Waller gets them over there sitting well, they'll, uh, you know, they'll win whatever they go over there. I think. The other key point of this is very elegant, uh, Dean. Uh, the uh, uh, interview done by Racing UK with Chris Waller bringing up uh, that the owners are very keen. They were keen to go before, but they're keen for next year around uh, the Arc de Triomphe. Uh, there's a lot of water to go under that bridge, as we know, but uh, it seems like they want to travel that winner as well, that mare. Yeah, they've, they've talked about the Arc with her... Uh you know, for a couple of years now, and I, and I think absolutely now is, is the right time. You know, she's a she's a six-year-old. Uh, that Melbourne Cup win was was uh, you know hard to believe. She that was just her peak her peak performance by a long way, uh, both to my eye and, and from a ratings perspective. She seems to just be getting better and better. Um, she's matched it really well with the Dave over here. Uh, and and you know the key is that she handles wet tracks. She's even better on wet tracks, and uh, and that's usually the case in the NARC. So the way she's going, I think she's going to measure up. And again, it'd be really just really great to see an Australian stayer uh, go overseas and, and run in one of their major races. And if she could take it, you know, it'll uh, it'll change the perspective. I think of some of the the pundits over there for sure. We're talking with Simon Donopoulos and Dean Evans reflecting on 2021. If you've got a thought about it, uh, you've got a few minutes to text through on 0499736736. What was your best moment of 2021 on the track? Was it that clash, Simon, a very elegant and a Dave in, in the uh, Ranvet and the Queen Elizabeth? Sadly, it won't happen again with a Dave not coming next year, but he made it the Sydney Autumn in some way, the uh, UK visitor the last couple of years. Yeah, and I think the big plus for all, you know, as Australians, we get sick of the UK pundits with their, their horses coming down here and winning. And a day who had a good record over there, but they wouldn't consider him top class. He came down and obviously beat very elegant. Uh, they had great stouches. 3-1, uh, he only beat a half a length twice. So, you know, she put up a fight every time. And he went back and won one of their big races, uh, which is, you know, what I wanted to see because, you know, our horses are as good as we think they are. And, a day performing on their stage sort of, you know, put them in their corner a little bit. So very, it's disappointing very elegant wasn't at the arc this year because she would have absolutely relished the conditions. And if she can front up and run a figure of 127 over there, as Dean touched on, she's going to be very competitive in the arc. And I suppose it's now or never really. They can't go next year, as in two years' time. So if they do do it, I'm hoping they do. And 
hopefully she can front up and run her peak over there. And Dave certainly made uh, the Sydney autumn. And looking this year, interesting to see if we get to see incentivise and bury again clash again what is the do you know what the plan is with incentivise andrew no look all i i spoke to T street to Tregay this morning and he said no all all we've done is put him in a paddock and uh he's got to put on a lot of weight so i, I don't think they're going to be rushing rushing back early autumn you know if they feel that the horse needs after a a really arduous campaign i don't think they're going to rush him back Interesting. So it could be he might have a couple of runs in Brisbane then, by the sounds of it. Yeah, that that that, that could be on the agenda. Yeah. So no, it'll be interesting uh, just where they place. Um, uh, this is the one I've got to ask about. Now I want you to hand on heart, guys. Hand on heart, and I'm going to do the same because I back state of rest, and I wanted to win that protest, but there were some very anxious moments in the Cox Plate should have state of rest held on and uh we've even got a drum roll geez dramatic stuff here uh, simon <laughs> should have state of rest been uh, given uh, the protest i was hoping you go to dean first to be honest i <laughs> my wallet my wallet says upheld but my heart says no okay watching That's, it yeah and what about you i don't dean? think yeah hey, go on go on dean uh yeah, no, it's very hard to be objective. I was on state of rest at, at $26 in the future. Well, there's no then, point asking you, then. Uh, there's, there's no point. There's no <laughs> point asking me. I, 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 spent, I spent a half hour just curled up in the fetal position because I was, thought I was going to get done, so I didn't really even watch the race again. So <laughs> I, 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 was just, I was just celebrating, and I finally got a call and told that the thing had won. Um, it, uh, yeah, I, I, I couldn't even watch. I couldn't even watch the replays. I, I just felt like it was going to get taken from me because that's what happens, you know? Well, I, I, uh, I, I think it was a 50-50 call. I, you know, it, 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 that could have gone either way. And, and uh, uh, you know, it was, just, it, was a, it was a great race. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it was one of those ones that I, I just think you can't comprehensively say either way. I think it, either way could have happened and 50% and, and would have been happy and 50% unhappy. Well, I got much shorter than 26, but I was still relieved at the time. And I think even the stewards room inside when they were making their decision were very much an open book. They were uh, leaning one way or the other there for a little while. And that's why it did drag on so long. So we've reflected. Wait, we, we, didn't, yeah. we didn't get your answer, Andrew. I oh, know. Um, no, don't worry. You're, you're on the fence. Uh, I, I'm on the <laughs> fence. Like, Hey, don't have a go at me. You sat on the fence too. You were on the fence. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I thought it was a good diplomatic answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, th I thought the more I watched the replays, the more issues had... Uh, issue state of rest was going to have to hold the race. I think that the more, I think live, I thought, no, we're uh, we're okay. But then we started to watch replays and I thought, oh no, I'm starting to get very edgy. Now, you know me, I like looking forward. Is there one horse from either of you that you want to really be on? We've only got a minute uh, around here, guys. So Dean, what's your horse to follow in 2022? Uh, I think Espiona is, is just a, a potential superstar. I, I usually pull the tail of uh, of hype horses and that sort of thing, but I haven't seen a horse trial and, and run as well as, as this mm. horse as a youngster for a long time. I I think she's going to just be a, a, a absolute superstar, and we're going to be talking about her for a, a long time, and she may well be unbeaten for a long time. I think she's just uh, going to be unbelievable. Yeah, good luck to uh, star thoroughbreds there, Denise Martin. Something different, Simon, or do you want to go the same way? Oh, I agree with Dean. I can't wait to see you back. She's a superstar. One I will mention is uh, Profondo. Only had the three starts, won the spring champion, arguably could be unbeaten. I just think he did a great job with him to get into a group one in such a short period of time. And you go back through the history of horses and not many are able to achieve what he did in such a short span. And to do it all in his first prep, I think he's a serious talent. So he's bred to be, and I'm hoping uh, Profondo can take that next step, next prep. Can't wait to see all of these horses. Uh, guys, you've been fantastic through the year. Really appreciate it. Can't wait to do it again in the new year. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, cheers, Andrew. Congrats on the one year as well. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, good on you, Dean. Yeah, cheers, Andrew. Good on you. Thanks, mate. Well done. Thanks, Dean. Dean Evans there from winningedgeinvestments.com and Simon Donopoulos from Racing and Sports. We love to get their thoughts. They've been a key player right through Track Talk since the introduction in 2021. This is Bensley on SEM.